Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give him the thanks right now. Another day to always give him the praise right now. Another day to always give him the glory right now. Another day to always magnify and shout out his holy name right now. Another day to always put Jesus first place in your life right now. Another day to say, I have hope right now because Jesus is your hope. He is your only hope. My brothers and sisters. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited right now just to be in the presence of the Lord. I'm so excited right now today, brothers and sisters, to fellowship with every last one of y'all. Hallelujah. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And I am so glad, glory, hallelujah, so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he is still on the throne. And he's still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business and he is still in the blessing business. He is still listening to prayers and he always answering prayers too. Always pray. And never give up. And if you're in love with Jesus, like you said, you're in love with Jesus, open up your mouth right now today and give him a shout out of praise in the house of the Lord right now today. Amen? Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And I'm here right now today because I have a love letter that I always like to present to my Heavenly Father God. And every last one of us should always have a love letter. And if you don't have a love letter, I mean, there's something wrong. Every last one of us should be thankful or have something to be thankful for. And if you're not thankful, there's something wrong with you. So for those who have a love letter, can you please join me in sharing your love letter to our Heavenly Father God? Heavenly Father God, I come before you right now today to let you know your holy, precious, mighty name that I have a lot to be thankful for. So thankful this day, Father God, because you woke us up this morning. You breathe life inside of us this morning, God. You bless us with our health and our strength. You made sure that we had air in our lungs. You made sure that the blood was flowing through our body. You made sure that our heart was beating regular. Father God, a lot of people this morning, God, didn't even wake up to that. A lot of people, Father God, is still in the hospital, Father God, in the ICU department, Father God, that's hooked up to a machine, and the machine is helping them to breathe, Father God. The machine is helping them to live, Father God. But, Father God, but you have your hands on us, God. So, yes, glory to God, I have a lot to be thankful for. I have a lot to be thankful for. I'm so thankful, Father God, that you blessed us with our health and our strength, God, that we was able to get up this morning, God, and go into our prayer closet and kneel down before the throne to you this morning, God, and just pray to you, God, and make our requests known to you. Even though, Jesus, you already knew what we was going to pray about, but God, I'm so thankful that I was able to do it. I'm also was so thankful, Father God, that I was able to pick up my Bible, my rock, and read a word from you, God. And meditate on your promises. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for today, God, that I was able to hang out and meditate and fellowship with my best friend, which is the Holy Spirit. I have a lot to be thankful for. Father God, I'm so thankful, Father God, for the air that we was able to breathe in today. So thankful, Father God, for my eyes that I can see, my ears that I can hear, my mouth so I can speak and praise and worship your and glorify your holy name. So, Father God, yes, I have a lot to be thankful for. I have a lot to be thankful for. So thankful, Father God, for the roof that you have provided for my head, for my family, the food that you have prepared and put on that table. The clothes and shoes that you put on that back. Father God, there's a lot of people, Father God, that's in this world. Don't even have a roof for their family to provide for them. Don't even have 
food to put on their table. Don't even have clothes and shoes to put on their back. So, Father God, by you bless me with these things that sorry people take granted for, God, I have a lot to be thankful for. I'm so thankful, Father God, for the job that you provided me with. And, Father God, during this pandemic that's going on, there's a lot of people, Father God, don't even have a job. There's a lot of people, Father God, that's begging for one. There's a lot of people, Father God, that's on the search, on the search for one. There's a lot of people right now that they, God will be, won't even mind taking our place. So, God, I am thankful. I'm grateful. I'm honored and blessed for the job that you provided me with, God. It might not be the best job. It might not be all of that job. It might not be the highest paid job. It might not be the job I want to be at. But, God, I'm so thankful that I have one. So thankful, Father God, that I can provide income for my family and pay my bills. I have a lot to be thankful, Father God, for the automobile that you blessed me with, God. It might not be the all of that automobile for some people, but God, I'm in love. I'm impressed with the automobile, God, that you blessed me with so that I'm able to go back and forth to work, that I'm able to run back and forth to the grocery store or to run errands or to go to point A to point B. There's a lot of people right now that they, God, don't even have a vehicle. There's a lot of people right now, Father God, that is walking. There's a lot of people right now that they, God, that's, that depend on the Charlie or the Amtrak or the city bus. There's a lot of people, Father God, that depend on Uber. There's a lot of people, Father God, that's hitchhiking. There's a lot of people, Father God, that got a bomb for rides. So, God, I'm thankful. I'm grateful for the automobile that you blessed me with. So thankful, Father God, that I'm able to fellowship with my brothers and sisters today. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for. I can't speak for everybody, God, but God, I'm here today to present my love letter to you because you made this happen. You, Jesus, not man, not nobody else, but you, Jesus. So, yes, I have a lot to be thankful for. And if you know that you have a lot to be thankful for, present your love letter to Jesus. Let him know how thankful you are. Amen? Amen. And I'm here right now today on behalf of myself, all my brothers and sisters, to repent of our sins. Because every last one of us has dropped the ball. Every last one of us has made some mistakes. Every last one of us has fell short of God's grace and mercy. Every last one of us. So there's no need trying to hide it. There's no need trying to sugarcoat it. There's no need trying to sweep it up under the rug. Because he already know what you've done before you did it. Before it even took place, he already knew what you was going to do. So if you can't keep it real and be honest with Jesus, who can you keep it real and be honest with? Come on, somebody. Now, I need some people today. If you're going to keep it real and be honest, join me right now today and repent of your sins. Heavenly Father God, I ask of you in your holy, precious, mighty name, to please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters, for every anything, Jesus, that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything, Jesus, that we had in our heart that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters, for every anything that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us right now. Wash us clean right now. Purify us through your blood right now. Clean us up as white as snow right now. Oh, Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for wiping away. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a clean new slate. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a break. I want to say thank you, Jesus, because you didn't have to do it. I want to say thank you. Amen? Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just can't thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I just can't thank you Father God, for who you are, what you're about to do. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for your grace and your mercy, our help and our strength. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for who you are and what you're about to do in our life right now. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on that table, the clothes and shoes on that back. I just can't thank enough, Father God, for, for your grace 
and your mercy. I just can't thank the Father God for your words and your promises. I just can't thank the Father God for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I just can't thank the Father God for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now. I just can't thank the Father God because you are a man that you should not lie, that you stand on your words, that you stand on your promises. I just can't thank the Father God that we can always depend on you, that we can always rely on you. I just can't thank the Father God for who you are and what you stand for. I just can't thank the Father God that we can always call in your name and you will always be there. I just can't thank the Father God because your word said that you never leave us or forsake us. I just can't thank the Father God because your word said no weapon form against us. It should not prosper at all. I just can't thank the Father God how you move in mountains on our behalf right now today and we won't even see it or realize right now. I just can't thank the Father God for our blessing. I can't thank the Father God for our breakthrough. I can't thank the Father God for our anointing. I can't thank the Father God for our deliverance. I can't thank the Father God for our double portion. I can't thank the Father God for our more than enough. I just can't thank the Father God for our connection. I can't thank the Father God for our resources. I just can't thank the Father God for the provision. I just can't thank the Father God for the rain. I just can't thank the Father God because you better put us at the right place at the right time. I just can't thank the Father Father God, because you about to show up and show out. I just can't thank the Father God because you will deliver. I just can't thank the Father God because you keep your promises. I just can't thank the Father God for the open doors. I can't thank the Father God for the closed doors. I just can't thank the Father God because you about to do a new thing in your sons, a new thing in your daughters, a new thing in me. I just can't thank the Father God because we about to meet our Boaz. I just can't thank the Father God because you about to open the floodgates of heaven and that you about to pour a blessing on your sons, a blessing on your daughters, a blessing on me that we ain't gonna better receive it all. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. Now, that's why I glorify your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart into you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag about you. That's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen, but let Jesus know right now, right now from the bottom of your heart that you cannot thank him, that you cannot thank him enough. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to my sisters right now today. I want to talk to my fellow brothers right now today. Because a lot of my sisters right now, a lot of my brothers right now, you are frustrated. You mad. You tired. You on the verge that you want to just throw up and say, I'm tired of it. I can't take it no more. And the reason why you are frustrated, the reason why you are tired, the reason why you on the verge say, I don't want to, I can't take it no more, is because you are expecting something. Anytime somebody expecting something, Frustration gonna take place, and the the reason why you got you are frustrated is because you are believing in something. If you didn't have faith, there there's no way that you'll be frustrated. If you didn't have faith, there's no way that you'll be expecting anything. But because you have faith and you're believing in something, that will cause frustration. Are you following me? What I'm saying? Because I'm frustrated. I'm tired. I have been waiting. And every time I wait, I feel like I'm getting disappointed. Every time I wait, I feel like that God has left me. Every time I wait, I feel like that God has closed the door on me. I feel like every time I wait, that God ain't got time for me. Every time I wait and I don't see nothing, I feel like that he's somewhere on a Bahamas somewhere and he is having a good time. That's what I mean when I get frustrated. Because I said, God, whatever I've done, 
I have done absolutely everything what a man or a child of God is supposed to do. But God, I have not seen anything happen. I have not seen any results. Father God, I have not seen any kind of expectation. But God, what is it? God, are you deaf to me? God, have you left me alone? God, where you at? God, I've been crying out to you. God, I've been praying every morning, every night. God, I have fasted. Father God, I have done absolutely everything what I'm supposed to do. But God, but it seems like I'm coming up short. God, it seems like I'm coming up empty. And God say, son, I know what you're doing. And I know that you're tired. But I want one thing to let you know. This ain't the time to give up right now. I know that you frustrated, but this ain't the time to give up right now. I know that you probably mad at me, but say this ain't the time to give up now. I know that you are going crazy right now, but this is not the time to give up on me. Because God said he's more impressed with a lot of y'all. Because some of y'all, y'all would have gave up a long time ago. Some of y'all, y'all would have been through the towel. Some of y'all would have said, I ain't got time for it. But you still right there waiting. Even though you're frustrated. You still right there waiting. Even though you ain't not seen no results. You still right there waiting. Even though ain't not, you have not seen no expectation. God say, I'm impressed with your faith. Your faith is moving him. Your faith is going through the fire. Right now. That's why I said this. Hold on just a little bit more longer. He said, I know what you're up to. I know what you're doing. But I need you to trust me. Right now, Jesus is testing your faith right now. That's why you're frustrated. That's why you're tired. Because you're expecting. Every day we don't see that, you get mad. Every day we don't see nothing, you get frustrated. You get more frustrated. Come on, somebody. Somebody frustrated right now. Somebody mad right now. Somebody upset right now. Somebody say, God, where you at? I've been waiting for a long time. I've been expecting for a long time. But God, I haven't seen nothing yet. And God say, sit still and know that I'm God. I'm talking to some people today that are expecting something. What are you expecting from Jesus right now today? But whatever it is that you are expecting, my sisters, whatever it is that you are expecting, my brother, it is growing. And it's growing. It is like a woman when she's ready to give birth. In the beginning, she's cool. But as time goes on, She's expecting to deliver that child because now that child is coming a, a burden to her. It is causing her pain right now by you waiting. It's causing you pain. It's making sure that it's causing you to lose breath. It's causing you to, to wheeze a little bit because you've been expecting. It's causing you to get a brown paper bag and blow in it because you are expecting right now a lot of y'all. By you being first ready, you are carrying something that's valuable. You are carrying something. Oh, help me, Jesus. You are carrying something that's big. You are carrying something. If it drop right now today, the whole world going to know what you about to drop. You ain't just carrying no baby. You carrying an elephant. An elephant Well. Tons, what you are carrying, it wearing tons because it is frustrating you because it is dragging you down because what you are holding, what you are holding is worth tons. What you're believing in is worth tons. And God said, I know the time, I know the day when you are going to deliver. But this ain't the time for you to deliver right now. You got to continue because God is still multiplying. He don't add. He multiplies. So he is still multiplying on what? Oh, help me, Jesus. He is still multiplying on what he is giving you because he has unlimited blessings. He has unlimited resources. He has unlimited connection. He has unlimited breakthroughs. So that's what Jesus is doing right now in this season. So yes, I, you have a right to be frustrated 
But everybody's not frustrated because everybody is not expecting nothing. If you're not expecting nothing, you're not going to get frustrated. The only time that you're going to get frustrated is because you're believing in something, you're trusting in something, and you know it's yours, and you know God is going to do it, and that what's frustrating you right now, who I'm talking to. I can't be the only person that's frustrated right now because a lot of y'all right now today, you've been praying and you've been hoping and you've been fasting. But every time you come up, you say, I know this got to be it. But what happened? You come up short. You come up short. And you say, okay, what is it? Is I'm doing anything wrong? God said, no, nah, you ain't doing anything wrong. He said, I'm more impressed with your faith. And he's happy with you. He is pleased with you. Because everybody don't have faith. He said majority of the people would have been walked out. Majority of the people would have been cussed me out. But you still right here waiting. And he said I got my eyes on you because now I can trust you. I know who deserve this blessing. I know who deserve this breakthrough. He said, I know who deserve this miracle. He said, I know who deserve this more than enough. He said, I know who deserve this abundance. He said, I know who deserve this overflow. He said, I know who deserve the right connection, the right resources. He said, I know who deserve the right people. He said, I know the I know people who deserve these new open doors. So you can change the way while being frustrated because your delivery date is on its way. Your delivery date on its way. How I know? Let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah 42. And we're going to read verse 14. And we're going to finish off at Isaiah 48. 10. Isaiah 42, verse 14. And we're going to finish off at Isaiah 48, 10. If you have it, let the church say amen. Amen, hallelujah. For a long time, I have kept silent. Just look at that. He said, for a long time. He said, for a short time. He said, for a period of time. He said, for some time. He said, for a long time. So that's why you're afraid because he is still going to keep silent because he still want to see what you're trying to do. He's trying to see, do you still want this? He's still trying to see, do you still believe in him? He's still trying to see, do you still trust him? He's still trying to see, do you have hope in him while you're frustrated? So that's why he's keeping silent. He want to see, you're going to be like the other jokers and say, I'm tired of this. I got to go. So when God not answering you, if he's not moving on your time, he is testing you. Faith without work is dead. So he is testing your faith. He is saying what your faith is all about. He is saying, he is trying to see if your faith is about that life. And a lot of you right now today, by you being frustrated, your faith is about that life. Because if your faith was not about that life, you wouldn't be frustrated because you wouldn't be expecting anything. Now, would you? No. He said, I've been quiet. Look what he did. He said, I kept silent. He said, now I've been quiet. He said, I've been listening to your prayers. I've been hearing your prayers. I have not turned deaf to you. I ain't left you. I'm still right here rocking with you. But I had to be silent and I had to be quiet because I had to see who really deserved this. I'm not just going to give this blessing to no fool. I'm not going to give this miracle to no fool. I'm not going to give this abundance to no fool. I'm not about to open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a huge blessing and overflow to no fool. So yes, for a long time, I had to be silent. Yes, for a long time, I had to be quiet because I had to see was your faith about this life. I had to see, do you really trust me and believe in me and abide by my words and my promise? He said, I had to see that. I had to test you. I had to put you to the test. I had to see, do you really want this or not? Are you just talking about it or you want to be about it? Come on now. He said, I held myself back. So he say, I held myself back because at one point in time, I was wanting to give it to you. But he say, I had to push myself back because I felt like you weren't ready for it yet. 
He said, I had to help myself back because I already gave it to you too early that you was going to mess it up. He said, it was still an area in your life that it was weak. So I had to make sure that I can give nothing to somebody who was 98% ready. He said, I got to give it to somebody who was 100% ready. So I had to help myself back. He said, I wanted to give it to you, but he said, I thought about it and said, oh Lord, it's 2% in that brother right there. Oh Lord, it's 2% in that sister right there. He or she is not ready. That 2% Sin has to be has to be fulfilled before I'm oh help me Jesus he said it had to be filled before I move in it had to be fulfilled before I open my mouth and do what I know I can do are you following me what I'm saying he said but now like a woman in childbirth so right now God is telling me to tell you he is ready right now because that pain that you are going through, that frustration that you're going through, that you are ready to deliver your blessing. God said you are ready to deliver your breakthrough. He said that you are ready to deliver your more than enough, your double portion. Because why? You just like a woman that's trying to give birth. When a woman trying to give birth, she is frustrated. She is tired. Only thing she got on her mind is to get that baby, up, 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 that baby outside of her because it's been wearing her down. She kept saying the, the human daughter kept saying that you are not ready yet, and she kept saying, "Oh, I'm ready yet." This baby's tearing me up. So the more she kept carrying that baby, the more she's getting frustrated because that baby still want to live in there. And God say, you are frustrated because what you are carrying is weighing you down. And what's weighing you down is your blessing. What's weighing you down is your breakthrough. What's weighing you down is your miracle. What's weighing you down is your double portion. Because why? It wear tons. It don't wear pounds. It don't wear hundreds of pounds. It wear tons. It is heavy. And you can't breathe. And you're losing breath. And you're tired. You got back pain. You got side pain. You got knee pain. You got foot pain. You got back pain. You got head pain. Because of the frustration. Because of what you're carrying. Come on somebody. But not like a woman in childbirth. He said I cry out. I gasp. And I pain. Right now. He said, you're ready. Some of you. But God says, there's some areas in your life that need to be fulfilled. He's not going to give you that blessing yet until he know that you're 100% ready. There's some people right now today that's 100% ready right now. So yes, you better get your blessing. And if God has not came through yet, he said, I want you to continue to be frustrated, but just know all things come together for those who wait. Right now, basically, what Jesus is telling me and telling you, he said, you're on the verge for things to start working out and start lining up in your life. But I want you to wait just a little bit more longer because I'm still multiplying things. He said, I know that you've been waiting for a long time. I know that you've been hurting for a long time. I know that you've been frustrated for a long time. I know that you've been losing breath for a long time. I know that you've been in pain for a long time. I know some of y'all been impatient for a long time. But God said all things come together for those who wait on the Lord. He said it's going to come together. It's going to work out. It's going to prosper. So we must continue to wait until God say. It's time for delivery time. But God has the, he has the right time and the right date when you're going to deliver. So yes, the more that you're being frustrated, the more that your faith is still going through the fire. That means he's still testing you. That means he's still using you. That means it's still an area in your life that still need to be fulfilled before you drop that load. Are you following me what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Let's go to Isaiah 48. And we're going to read verse 10. Isaiah 48, verse 10. If you haven't let the church say amen. Hallelujah. See, I have refined you, though not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. See, I have tested you. God only tests people who is frustrated. He only tests people who have faith. He only tests people who is going through something and expecting something. You are expecting something because you believe and trust in Jesus that it's going to happen. 
So yes, you are frustrated because he said, I have tested you. That's why he got to test you in the furnace. He had to put you in a fire. He got to see what you made of, silver or gold. And he said, you are gold. 14K. My point I'm making is, all things come together for those who wait. I know you're expecting something. And I know that you're frustrated. But continue to wait on the Lord. It's all going to come together. It's all going to work out. I know you feel like that God is, has forgotten about you. I know you feel like has God has abandoned you. But he had not He listened to your prayers. He answered them. But he got to do things on his own time. Our job is to continue to trust him. And have faith in him. And have hope in him. You have came this far. By waiting. So continue to wait it out. Because I'm so happy and proud of y'all, my brothers and my sisters, because a lot of people, when they waited the way that you waited, they would have gave up a long time ago. Because why? They never wanted it in the first place. But Jesus know that you want it. That's why you're still frustrated. That's why you're like, I can't take it no more. But he said, just hold up, chill out a little bit, and know that I'm God. I got you. I'm going to come through. He said, I know you. I see your frustration. And I feel your pain. I feel your anxiety. But just know that I'm testing you through the furnace. I'm testing you because I still want you to grow in this area right here. And whatever the area it is that Jesus wants you to grow in, you have to grow because he wants you to make sure that you're 100% mature to handle that tongue. You're already carrying the tongue. But he wants to make sure are you mature enough to handle the tongue because it's going to be more than enough. I know it's weighing you down. I know it's, it's making you lose breath. I know it's causing you pain. I know that you're wheezing. But guess what? Sooner than later, you're going to drop that load. And when you drop, it's going to shake. And everybody's going to know about your blessing. Because why? You waited on the Lord. The point I'm making right now, continue to wait on Jesus. He's going to come through for you. And if this word is for you, and you know God is talking to you, can you give him some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord right now today? Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is with us, .alt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put your faith, your trust, and your hope in Jesus, no matter what. Always continue to choose faith over fear. Always continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It does not matter if you know them. It does not matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing I ask y'all guys to do for me, continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. This is Serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.